Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Today's video is going to be a review for the hand cannon that returned to Destiny 2 with the Vaulted Glass Raid and Season of the Splicer, the legendary Fatebringer. This thing was an absolute beast in Destiny 1, but how does it stack up in Destiny 2? Does it live up to its legacy, or is it just a nostalgic piece of the past? I'm going to try and answer that question by taking a look at its weapon stats, roles, and overall performance in PvE, as well as a quick look at its PvP potential. Just a note before we move on, the PvE section of this review will actually be divided into two parts, since this weapon has a variety of roles that I think are good at different levels of PvE content, and I think I can better review Fatebringer by splitting the PvE section into both a low-end and high-end PvE review. Before we begin, however, if you like what you see, please feel free to leave a like on this video, and if you want more Destiny 2 videos in the future, a subscribe will let you know whenever I upload a new video, and my Twitch channel is also linked down below if you're ever interested in seeing me live stream. Now, on to the Fatebringer. Starting with the basics, for anybody that doesn't know, Fatebringer is a kinetic 140 round per minute hand cannon that only drops from the Vault of Glass raid. It only drops from the Templar encounter and the Gatekeeper's encounter, although once you've obtained a Fatebringer once, the four bonus chests will have a chance to contain Fatebringer once per week per character, and you'll also be able to purchase this weapon from the final chest of the Vault of Glass raid for 20 spoils of conquest. At the time of writing this video, the Fatebringer's time loss variant is not currently dropping, but it is assumed to be from the Master Vault of Glass coming on July 6th, and is also assumed to be a variant of this weapon that will be able to slot Adept mods. Starting with roles of this weapon for low-end PvE, which is basically just going to be story content, seasonal content, playlist strikes, lower level nightfalls, and normal mode raids, I will keep this part short, but if you'd like to skip straight to the higher end PvE content section, jump to the timestamp on screen. There's quite a few things that you can go for on this hand cannon for this level of PvE content. I'd like to start by highlighting the perk Firefly, which is basically a combination of both Outlaw and Dragonfly. At the moment, this perk is virtually exclusive to the Vault of Glass weapons, as the only non-raid weapon that can currently get this perk is the Hung Jury SR4 Scout Rifle, which is dropping from Nightfalls. This perk is not compatible with Dragonfly Specs mod, and it gives just under half of Outlaw's reload speed bonus. And on top of that, it will always create a solar explosion specifically regardless of the element of the weapon. However, the fact that Firefly combines a reload and damage perk makes it so that you can get a really good utility perk like Thresh on your Fatebringer and not have to sacrifice the potential of a damage perk or a reload perk. The Fatebringer I used for this portion of the video was one with Thresh and Firefly, and this roll was able to help me get a lot of super energy back as kills with Firefly would activate Thresh, making it easier for me to get more supers more often. Rewind Rounds is not a bad perk here either, in my testing with Firefly, however, I did find that Explosive Rounds was still interfering with the activation of Firefly, not as much as it has in the past, but enough that I noticed it and it was a little annoying. Frenzy and Kill Clip aren't bad perks either, but for lower end PvE, the pure slaying potential offered by Firefly was certainly the best thing that I found for this hand cannon. Let's move on to the higher end PvE, however, which is basically just going to be any sort of master or grandmaster content where you're likely to be underleveled going into it. This includes day one raids, by the way. Fatebringer really shines here. The role I used for this portion of the video is Rewind Rounds with Frenzy, although I think Explosive Payload and Frenzy is almost just as good. I wouldn't really recommend any other Fatebringer role for master grandmaster content, though. Firefly, while it is cool, does not really translate well into missions where your primary weapon is going to take longer and longer to get kills, especially with how lackluster hand cannons as a whole are for Grandmaster and Master level content. Most of the time, hand cannons don't have quite enough damage or magazine size to tackle higher end PvE content, but just like in this season, our champion mods often force us into having to use hand cannons. The really good hand cannons for Master and Grandmaster tend to either have a very high uptime damage perk, like one for all, or an easy way to increase their magazine size, like Overflow. The best hand cannons for this level of PvE usually have both, such as the Deepstone Crypt's Posterity Cannon, having both Reconstruction and Redirection, or Reconstruction and One for All, and last season's Palindrome, which can get Overflow with One for All. The Fate Ringer is in the same boat as these other legendary hand cannons, and it also has the bonus of being in your kinetic slot, where it is one of only two legendary 140 RPM hand cannons. Its only competition in its archetype is Dire Promise, 
which despite being a PvP favorite for quite a while, does not translate quite so well to PvE. Fatebringer with Rewind and Frenzy has the bonus of being able to put out over 20 shots before having to reload, while also having Frenzy's 15% damage bonus as well as its reload bonus. It solves both the damage issue and the magazine issue with one roll. As for the rolls with Explosive Payload and Frenzy, the magazine problem is still present, but you gain the fact that you have two damage perks. Frenzy provides you with a 15% damage buff, as well as a pretty good reload speed buff, while Explosive Payload gives your Precision Shots a further 11% buff, and a 15% buff to your non-Precision Shots. As another cherry on top, because you have Explosive Payload, you get to activate your Overload Shot mod in one shot instead of two, since the Overload Hand Cannon mod counts Explosive Payload as a separate hit for its buff to activate. So do I think Fatebringer is a good Hand Cannon for PvE players? For sure. Its perk pool is really solid at all levels of PvE, combined with the fact that this thing is the only 140 rounds per minute kinetic hand cannon that can get the incredible frenzy perk. I think it's a no-brainer to go and grind out this hand cannon and use it in higher level content. Moving on to PvP, which I'll touch on very quickly, I didn't test Fate Ringer a whole lot, especially how you'll notice there is no background gameplay of Fate Ringer for this video, since it is a fairly standard hand cannon when it comes to PvP. What I did do, however, is take a look at its perks compared to its competition, which in this case is really just Dire Promise as well as a couple energy 140 RPM hand cannons, and I came to my conclusion from there. If I had to recommend one specific role for PvP on this thing, it would have to be Killing Wind and Opening Shot, with an honorable mention to perks like Killing Wind and Firefly, as well as a role of Tunnel Vision and Opening Shot. Basically, as a 140 RPM, Perks like Kill Clip are less valuable on Fatebringer, since it does not decrease this weapon's time to kill at all. It still does have some value, seeing as Kill Clip will take the weapon from a 3-tap of all crits to a 2-crit 1-body 3-tap, but it will still be a 3-tap nonetheless. I'd say they take the consistency offered by a Dire Promise over Fatebringer for PvP, Unless the theories that the time loss variant is in fact able to slot adept mods turn out to be true, in which case you might want to pick up a time loss fate ringer for the ability of slotting adept mods, but as of the writing of this video, I just have to recommend either Dire Promise or an exotic 140 like Thorn for anybody looking at fate ringer for PvP. It's not bad, but it just isn't a game changer, and I wouldn't necessarily go and try to get it. If I'm being honest, Dire Promise is still much better as it can be much more consistent and has a better perk pool for BVP. However, that's all I have for the Fate Bringer. And in conclusion, I think it's a good hand cannon to pick up, not just for nostalgia reasons, but also for the value that it brings to all levels of PvE. Have you landed your god roll yet? Let me know your thoughts on the Fate Bringer in the comments down below, and remember that if you like this video, a thumbs up and a subscribe is always appreciated. And if you'd like to check out my Twitch channel, it is also linked in the description down below like always, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.